Hey guys, today I want to discuss a few terminal commands, in particular a few terminal commands that not everybody knows exist, uh, things that will make your life a little easier if you live in a terminal or you want to learn more about the terminal. Let's start with a useful command to search uh, the descriptions of files and programs. Apropos. Apropos as it's uh, spelled commonly here in the English language, uh, A-P-R-O-P-O-S, apropos, and then type whatever you want to search for. How about I just use the word search, apropos search, and it returns every program on the system where search is part of its description. I could have also done apropos, and then in parentheses, a search phrase such as the most. And it returns every program that has the most in its description. Just quickly running man apropos to look at the man page for apropos. Apropos searches the manual page names and descriptions. So let me hit Q to quit the man page. Apropos searches the file name, the program name. It also searches the man page for that program to find whatever search term or search phrase you're lo looking for. So one more time, apropos, then I'll give it a search phrase. How about the best? And there apparently are only two programs that contain the phrase the best in its man page. FC font set match and SM player both have the best. SM player, actually its description, the best GUI front end for M player. So that's apropos. Let me get a clean terminal again. So I'm going to type the word clear. Cleans the screen up for me. All right. Now, many of you know that in your shell, hitting the up arrow keys will get you the last command that you typed. If I keep doing that, it'll cycle through basically our history. You can actually type the word history in the shell. And this is all the commands in my history. Uh, because I haven't actually used this particular virtual machine of Netrunner, I just installed this like yesterday, did a video on Netrunner rolling, and I really haven't used the, the shell at all since I've installed this, so I only have six things, but on a normal computer, this would be a very long list, several hundred. Uh, anyway, so history. Now, you get your history list. Uh, you could do the exclamation symbol and then a number from the list, for example, one. So exclamation point one runs that first history command. Exclamation six would run the sixth one. See how that works? Or I could do exclamation, exclamation, and it will run the very last command I ran. So it basically runs the previous command again. So to recap, history lists our entire history, our bash history or our CSH history, and then exclamation and then some number from that list will run that command, or just two exclamations will run the very last command, which will be the last one in the list, history here in my case. Now, why is this useful? Well, you will be surprised how often you type a command and you forget to give yourself pseudo privileges. For example, I haven't updated this machine today, so I don't know if there are updates, but Pac-Man dash capital S lowercase y lowercase u. I'm going to run that. Oh, wait, I can't run that. I'm not root. Well, you know what? I could do sudo and then exclamation, exclamation, sudo, and then run that last command. Ask me for my root password, of course. That just saved me the trouble of having to type Pac-Man dash SYU again. The, the two exclamation points in a row, you will find that that comes in handy every time you forget to type sudo. Now, uh, I'm actually going to choose no here to proceed with this update because I don't want to update the system. Actually, this brings me to another point. Having to answer yes or no on some of these questions in the terminal, particular for uh updates, upgrades, install, remove software. Uh, can't you just automatically answer yes? 
And yes, you can. Type the word yes, space, and then the pipe symbol, space, and then pseudo pacman dash syu. Or actually, I don't even have to do pseudo pacman dash syu since that was the last command I typed anyway. How about two exclamation points? Watch what happens here. It runs this, it automatically answers that proceed with installation question as yes, and it updates my system without me needing to actually type Y for yes. All right, let me clear the screen again, just to get a clean terminal to work with again. All right, now there are going to be some programs you run in the terminal that just spit a ton of information out, and it is not laid out in a very readable fashion. One such command would be mount. Uh, basically, I type mount, and it just spits out all of this information. It is not columned in any way. It is very difficult to read. So how could you clean up something like this? Well, there actually is a way to do this. Mount, space, the pipe symbol again, space, and then type column, space, dash T, which stands for table layout. And now when you hit enter, let me make this bigger, you notice that it is in a more readable layout. It's actually got columns to it because my font is so big, it's kind of hard to, to see what's going on here. But there it is again. And now you see it's got nice, clean columns instead of, you know, before it was just a big, jumbled mass of text. And basically the way this worked is because that uh, that file before, it, it takes the spaces between each words and basically makes columns out of it. So it works really well for something like Mount. But some programs, some of these text files, they don't have spaces. Uh, one such would be, I mean, cat slash Etsy slash pass WD. And you see it spits out all of this. There are no spaces anywhere in this. So how would you get the column table layout to work for something because there's no spaces to separate into columns? Well, you have to be a little more creative here. Cat slash Etsy slash pass WD space and then the pipe symbol again space column dash T for table layout. But then you need to do dash S space and then colon. Why colon? Because you see all of this is separated by colon. Uh, colons instead of spaces. So we're telling it, hey, find those colons, and that's where you're going to break into columns. And there we have. Now it's a clean, readable file. One of the most annoying things sometimes when you're living in a terminal is that when you run a command from a terminal, if I close this terminal, it kills that command. It kills that process that's running. So, for example, if I ran the command ping C 25 Google.com. We're just going to go out and ping Google Google uh, 25 times. Anyway, it's just going to ping Google 25 times. Now, if I close this terminal, it's going to stop pinging Google. It's not going to run through the 25 times I told it to. You know, it's, on, it's going to stop on number 10 or whatever it's on as soon as I close out this terminal. And that works the same for any command I type in the terminal, any program I launch, say I launch the Firefox web browser from the terminal. Well, when I close the terminal, Firefox is going to close. So I, I get people asking, you know, about this pretty regular when, when I do some terminal stuff. You need to, at the beginning of this command, type N-O-H-U, N-O-H-U-P. N-O-H-U-P. What this stands for is no hangup, meaning I close this, it's going to keep running whatever command until it's done. Let's try it. So no, no hangup, N-O-H-U-P, and then ping dash C 25 google.com. I hit enter. It's ignoring. Okay. That's it. It's running. It's telling us that it is writing to N-O-H-U-P dot out n o h u p dot out so it's writing it to a text file right here in our home folder well and we're going to give it a few seconds to let it finish pinging google 25 times i want to make sure it's done before i open this file 
All right, and I waited a minute or so, and let me open this text document now. Of course, it's going to open in the Kate text editor. I'm running KDE today. And you see, here are those 25 pings. Basically, this is the output it would have spit out in the terminal had we not used NOHUP and then closed the terminal. So when you use NOHUP, it's assuming you're probably going to close the terminal, so it's not going to output anything to the terminal because you're going to lose all that information. So it puts it in a plain text file. And it puts this plain text file by default in your home folder. And of course, that works for graphical programs too. NOHUP Kate, the Kate text editor. Now I close this terminal. Normally you do this, the Kate text editor closes too, but not when you use NOHUP. It'll still keep this open. Now I'm going to go ahead and close it. Now we still had that file written, NOHUP.out. Actually, it didn't write anything to NOHUP.out for Kate. Uh, apparently it didn't output anything in the terminal, or it wouldn't have. So. But that's a, a useful command to know, again, if you're launching stuff from the terminal and then want to close the terminal. And finally, I saved the best for last in this terminal tutorial. There are two extremely useful programs for the terminal that should be installed on every system by default. Unfortunately, they're usually not. Those programs are called Fortune and Calsay. So I have not actually installed these on Netrunner, so I'm going to sudo pacman dash capital S. It's called fortune dash mod in Arch. This is the uh, fortune program. And then I'm also going to install calsay. C-O-W cal S-A-Y say. Yeah, let's go ahead and get these installed. Very important programs. All right, they're installed. Now type the word fortune. And you notice, I get a fortune. It would save me a lot of time if you just gave up and went mad now. Hmm. Let's do fortune again. All right, question. What's the difference between Batman and Bill Gates? Answer. When Batman fought the penguin, he won. And let's keep going. One more fortune. Being asked solicitously about the state of her health was becoming bothersome to the pregnant woman at the cocktail party, and yet another guest went over and inquired, Well, how are you feeling these days? Not too well, said the expectant mother. You know, I've missed seven or eight periods now, and it's beginning to worry me. Now you can see how important a program like Fortune is. Uh, you know, and do you want to be bothered typing Fortune in the uh, command line every time you want to run this? No, you could actually just add the fortune command to your bash rc file or your zsh rc file whatever shell is default on your system so that you automatically every time you launch a terminal you get a fortune i mean that's what i would do but i would take it a step further the cal save program so type fortune space the pipe symbol space cal save so we're going to take a fortune and we're gonna pipe it into CalSay. What is CalSay? Well it is an ASCII art cal that's gonna spit out whatever fortune it gives us. And there we have it. We have our ASCII cal with a little text bubble above it and, and then our fortune. My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen unknown and known too late. William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. Now, this was probably what I would add to my bash RC file. Fortune, pipe, calsay. So every time I open my terminal, I get a fortune and calsay. Of course, if you wanted to be more creative, I mean, you could do something like, you know, the ls command, the list command. So I'm going to list every directory here in my home directory. There they are. How about the list command piped out to calsay? Oh, yeah, I like that. So, I mean, we've reviewed, you know, several important commands today, apropos history, uh, how to pipe things out into a columned uh, layout, a tabled layout, the no hang up command, N-O-H-U-P. We also discuss how to automatically answer yes to certain questions that come up in the terminal. But by far, the most important thing we've discussed today is Fortune and CalSay. Get these programs installed on your systems, guys. Peace.